Good morning all. Uh, you're joining me at the very end of April. So today's date of recording is April 25th. Last night we had ground temperatures in this area as far down as minus three degrees. This is my most lowest border. It's probably the border that gets the most attention on Instagram and socials. Um, it's probably my most photographed border. This is what it kind of looks like in the raw. So it's very early stages of coming into growth. Like I said, we're at the end of April. And this border is primarily aimed at sort of early summer. So just the end of June, right through till September, October color. Uh, that's just kind of my seasonality of preference, probably like most gardeners. And although this border is predominantly quite colourful, there's lots of oranges in here, there's lots of purples, there's lots of clash in colour. At this time of the year, sort of late April, early May, it's very soft, it's very gentle, it's very calm. Uh, it gets very early morning sunlight because the sun still doesn't rise as high during the day. It's actually south facing, but current time of recording is 7am. And uh, originally, I think I've talked about this before, but this border started off as a white themed border. Uh, so there's lots of snowdrops in here which have came and gone. There is the white daffodils, that's the um, Thalia daffodil, I think it's called Thalia, dotted through. There's a couple of Mount Hood daffodils as well and they were a bit larger and now over time they've kind of fizzled out. Um, there's white tulips through this border as well and then there's a few pastel pink ones. But yes, very soft, very gentle. The Solomon seal is coming up. The lamb's ears is starting to push through the stip of grass as they just kind of stay through all seasons there's nice pastel coral poppies in here and again that was kind of a, a slight nudge as an introduction to color because i've kind of stripped this border away from being predominantly white to like i said hotter colors bright oranges bright purples really intense summer colors but that doesn't come until at least july june is that nice break in period because as the white daffodils start to die back the tulips start to fizzle out there's a couple of clumps of camassia again in white there's quite a lot of purple sensation allium through here at which point the gems come through and that's your brighter orange and that starts to get the wheels in motion that's kind of the build up of the introduction to the color and then at which point in later summer, there's lots of cosmos in here. There's lots of the Mexican sunflower, uh, tithonia in here and uh, pokers. So really, really vivid, intense colors. So yes, there was quite a heavy ground frost here last night. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too worried. I think any plants that were in this border that I've lost this season have died, um, unfortunately. Things like the angel wings, I'm not sure if that, they're coming back or not. And I had a really impressive couple of clumps of angel wings. And unfortunately, December 2022, there was just that extreme minus 14 temperature. And even though I did have them covered with horticulture fleece, they just haven't pushed through. This area, as I've mentioned so many times before, I actually sit in a frost pocket. And because of the sort of levels of this garden as well, this is at the lowest point of the garden, so it's at the lowest point of the basin. There's not much kind of microclimates going on here. There's not many walls or anything that can kind of radiate heat. So um, whenever there is a cold frost, it could be maybe two degrees at the end of my road. And literally, no joke, a couple of hundred meters up to where I'm at here, it could be zero degrees. So I always notice at least two degrees to two and a half degrees dip just from here to the main road uh, at the, where I live. And you wouldn't think it for all the distance it is but it does happen. So yeah last night in the greenhouse lots of things were covered up. There's a lot of hort fleece out, all the seedlings were tucked up. It's not unusual at this time of year to still have frosts like this is not late by any means. Um, you can still have frosts right up till May. I'm not you know this this kind of weather doesn't it, it, you know it's not shocking by any means um, but it is something you do have to be cautious of if you're new to gardening. There's no tenders planted out yet. All my hardy annuals are actually still in the tunnel. They are been hardened off currently because I say we are at the end of April. Weather to date has been quite cold though through the day and that's actually been slowing a lot of my growth up uh, in the tunnels, which is a wee bit unfortunate. Um, I'm starting to notice now springs are longer and colder and drier, although this year from about February right through till middle of April has been quite wet. It uh, hasn't bothered me at all. I've actually been quite thankful for that because last year 
because it had been so dry and so cold, the plants were just kind of existing, but they weren't getting any moisture. I don't mind if it's quite wet in February or March because I started water storage collection, as you know, and uh, it's a great way just to collect and harvest rainwater. I'm conscious that the way England and mainland UK went last year, that if there is like another extreme burst of heat, that you know going forward we should all be collecting water as much as we can uh, to preserve it. I don't try and water these borders, I don't really tend to set sprinklers up. I really don't want to have to do that. The cost of living crisis, like everything else, I haven't been able to just justify the cost of mulching anymore. So these borders haven't been mulched this year, uh, which I would have loved to have done. Um, it's great for weed suppressant, it's, it's great for just keeping, retaining moisture in the borders, but um, this year the, the plants will just have to do without. So touch wood, uh, there's no issues there. And yeah, I will keep you updated as this border progresses because obviously it does look fantastic midsummer. It all looks a wee bit drab now at the moment, but do you know what? This is actually my favourite time of it as well. Like, I know everybody gets so excited for summer colours and they get so excited for all those, you know, big, bright, colourful flowers and blue skies and late evenings and sunsets and stuff, but this moment right here, just kind of as these plants are all unraveling in morning sunlight um, from last night's frost and they're all pushing through like the hostas are pushing through miscanthus grasses are starting to push through again like that to me is just as exciting as the whole build up to the real colour the big exciting summer moments this is as equally as exciting I know maybe visually it's a wee bit more dull but and, I, and I'm quite a colourful person, like I love colour and I know all these pastel tones can kind of be a wee bit samey and wishy-washy but this time of the year I enjoy that. I don't need the big bright blousy colours and don't get me wrong, I do incorporate them in other areas. I do have big bright tulips in other borders but this lower border down here, I just love it for being pastel. I love it for being silver. I love the whites. But yes, as this border progresses I'll do another video and maybe a couple actually, just so we're seeing all the stages of it, because it really, it really gets going from uh, the end of June onwards. Once those alliums start to go over, all your other kind of flowers are all starting to push through and compete for attention, and that's an exciting moment. And then we have kind of that autumnal phase where the day's starting to shorten again, and the cosmos and the tithonias and uh, the sedums are all fighting for that extra sunlight and uh, they start, you know, that autumnal light, October sunlight is amazing. It's just like as we're having here right now, this May mor or this April morning sunlight, fantastic. October afternoon sunlight on a dry day, oh my goodness, stunning. Great for taking photographs and, and that's, that's the whole part of it. That, you know, you can't have it all at once but it comes in stages and that's what's exciting. So yeah. I will keep you posted and if anybody has any questions or you want to ask me anything about any of these plants, drop me a comment below or private message me and I will get back to you as quick as I can. Thank you.